I'm Ken Hartwick, President and CEO of Ontario Power Generation. What would you say are the main forces shaping Canada's electricity sector and how prepared is Canada to deal with them? I think that the primary area, you just see it's climate change. And it's uh, if you look across what that does uh, to the electricity sector and virtually every other part of our economy, it's really driven around the need to move forward as a country and I, and I think more broadly as a society uh, with the decarbonization of of, uh, of the world and, and all the things that we use uh, in the world. And I think electricity can play a big, big part in that in you know, ensuring that we have a clean power system uh, so that as we decarbonize and move away from gas burning vehicles to electrification of buses and transport and these types of things that, uh, that our sector plays a role in this. So it's almost an overriding theme on everything to do with electricity now is what is the role that we can play in the decarbonization of our economy. And, and again, we tend to get very focused on, you know, the province we live in, the country we live in, but it extends well beyond that to every part of the, uh, uh, of the world and society that, that affects uh, our lives. Interesting. So you could have given me a long list of, of megatrends, but you're basically saying that the energy transition and, and climate change, this is the megatrend. Are, is there any other one? Would there be a number two on your list? So I, I think it's it's really then around innovation. And I think this will come out through the course of our conversation today is, uh, do we have the right uh, people with the right skills, with the right thought process around innovation that will allow the electricity sector to advance and to be part of the broad, broader solution here. And, you know, it, it's a bit cliche-ish when we talk about, you know, people and skills and, and uh, uh, training, et cetera, but it is the, the center point to being able to accomplish what I think we want to do as a, as a country. Well, this is a perfect segue for my next question, and perhaps it's a bit of a loaded question, but how attractive is the electricity or the power sector to Canada's youth? Um, and what can we do to you know, attract that youth, which will be the future innovators and the future leaders uh, of the sector? It's funny because when most people think about the energy sector, think about utilities, innovation isn't typically the first word that pops to mind. It's sort of, you tend to think of an older industry uh, an older uh, uh, operating environment. So it's not like the new wave, you know, Shopify, Uber, you know, pick, pick your new wave com company. But actually from an innovation standpoint, the industry is incredibly interesting. And if you think about where we've come, especially over, I'd say the last five years, it's how do we take uh, our you know, technologies like solar and wind and make them relevant to the electricity sector? How do we advance items like nuclear? How do we make uh, gas plants that we might operate more environmentally friendly? So the, the amount of innovation uh, it, across this industry is good. And I often say, if you want a chance to be innovative, perhaps starting with an industry that's on the early stages or verge of being innovative is a great place to be because the opportunities to uh, to bring that innovation that an employee or a person might want a young person entering their career is great. So, yeah, so I think it's, it's one of those things we, we haven't done a great job as an industry branding ourselves as a place where highly innovative people want to be, but I think some of us are getting better at it and uh, are being able to put that message out to uh, prospective people to start thinking about our industry as a, a, a neat place to be. Yeah, I suppose that's where a group like the Electricity Human Resources Canada comes in. It is, and there, there's a number of groups, you know, that that uh, sort of take on the same type of uh, mantra where you try to um, talk about the things we're doing, and you know, and give you a great example out at uh, one of our nuclear stations uh, that uh, you know we're deploying technology robots probably more than any other uh, company or industry actually does. And so the engineering people that are working with us and some of our trades people, like this is the leading edge of technology. Uh, and, but again, we just haven't done a great job of, of, of making that as known as what we need to. And, uh, and that's part of the challenge. I think we as an industry face in attracting, you know, the, the, the best and the brightest and, and those people that want to make a change and make a difference. 
Well, I want to ask you about the challenges and how they can be overcome. Uh, so what are they, considering what you just said, that the industry is undergoing or, or on the cusp of transformation or even disruption? Yeah, so I think if you start with the with the people side, a lot of it is awareness because I think if if you start off by making people aware of the challenges, and challenges are good because challenges create opportunities, and opportunities attract uh, the best and the brightest because there's a chance to make a difference, to do things that can solve a bigger problem, and and I, and I'd say. You know, this is a little bit maybe unfair, but I'd say our younger people that that I talk to, they want to make a difference. Now, that's not to say I'm 58. You know, I want to make a difference too, but uh, but it's an it's a really big theme that they want to work at a company, work at a work in an environment where they know they can be impactful on a broader set of social issues, and that's something where we just need to be more assertive as an industry to make people aware that this, I think one of the greatest industries to be in, if you want to make a difference, uh, especially on the climate, uh, the climate part of, uh, of what we, we think we are part of the answer to. If we want to electrify every vehicle, every bus, every heavy piece of uh, uh, trucking transportation, uh, every building, so we become carbon neutral by, you know, Canada's targets 2040, OPGs or 2050, OPGs is 2040. That's sort of where the uh, challenge and opportunity is. And that's why I think the energy sector will be the biggest participant in being able to accomplish this. The magnitude of the challenge you're, you're talking about suggests that uh, the energy sector, let alone one of its key players like OPG, can't um, fix it on its own. Uh, and therefore, uh, I'm, I'm assuming that partnerships within the industry and with other key stakeholders, government or academia, are essential. Could you give us a sense of the kind of collaborations you think are needed? Your point is, is a really good one in that no one person, no one technology, no one company is going to successfully move down this path. And, and I go through sort of a, a variety of different sort of partnership collaboration arrangements. You know, you can start with the federal government provincial governments, it's important that a policy framework be laid out. You know, it's great to have a goal of being carbon neutral by 2050. You know, everyone can say it. It's much more complex to do it. So you need the policy frameworks around that, uh, that, that then create an environment where people want to help solve the problem. So back to your, your innovation point. And then you sort of go from there to say, okay, now how do, how do companies, uh, when I say companies, it can companies, universities, research institutes all need to participate in this. And, and for OPG, we have partnerships with uh, other companies like Enbridge. We do a lot of work. They're a big gas company. We do work with them on, on different things. We partner with technology vendors like uh, GE, like Siemens and others like that. Uh, we partner with universities and colleges because they're, you know, especially on the university college side, that's sort of the starting point for a lot of the advanced innovation research that uh, that needs to then form part of uh, part of how we approach this problem. You know, and I've said to a lot of people that um, innovation isn't a thing. It's a thought process in a, in, a, in, a, in a way of being for a company. And the more people you have involved in that from different um, institutions, uh, the more likely it is you're successful solving a problem. Uh, and and uh, the problem's very clear. Like I say, it's right in front of us, and uh, but it requires groups of thought processes that are very diverse in what their goals and objectives are. So you made clear from the beginning that climate change is the biggest factor or mega trend impacting the future of the Canadian power sector in this case. Um, how will it um, uh, impact Canada's electricity workforce and um, what must be done to mitigate the risks that it presents to that workforce. When I talk about a welder, you know, a certain vision comes to mind, right? like people that do welding of steel and other things for us as a company, the energy sector. And that vision tends to be uh, someone that's working with a hot torch in their hand and, uh, and a piece of metal. Uh, if you went out to our one uh, Darlington nuclear station where we're, we're putting $12.8 billion in to have basically 3000 megawatts close to 4,000 megawatts of carbon-free energy and talk to the welding, it is very high tech. 
It, in fact, it is robotic. It is uh, a lot of it is remote control oriented. So it is reskilling the trades so that they can now take advantage of the technology innovation that happens and why that's important is then it then it leads to more cost effective cheaper power which allows us to clean up the energy sector even further so that's good goes back to our climate change and i go across across a lot of our plants now and if you go to uh, certain of the technologies you know you you wait for a piece of equipment to break and then you go fix it that's not how it's done anymore. A lot of it is, has intelligence wrapped around it. So you get predictive signals on when a piece of equipment might not work properly and you fix it before it ever breaks. And, and again, these are the types of breakthroughs that all of a sudden make electricity or energy more broadly cheaper for everybody. And therefore you can electrify more things, which therefore cleans up the economy. So all, all these things tend to be interrelated. So now I want to ask you about specific stakeholders in the ecosystem and what they have to do to ensure that our future workforce has the skills they need, that we have diversity, that we have productivity as well. You look to some of the professional groups like engineers and others that come out of universities. I think across every university and college, they need to step back and say, are their programs really preparing people for the workforce of the future? Some I think are, some aren't. And it's uh, if you go into a high school now, it should be a standard course for artificial intelligence. It should be there everywhere. It's uh, there is no reason for it not to be. Uh, and uh, and so I think we need to as a as an education system, starting probably in elementary all the way through, but re-examine uh, are the programs are younger people taking uh, relevant to the types of jobs that are being identified. What we're increasingly looking for as we hire people is. Are they entrepreneurial? Are they current with innovation? Are they current with some of the technology developments that have happened? Um, and, and being able to bring that. So it's really taking the combined workforce and saying, let's make sure we are current or on the front edge of technology and, uh, and maybe break some of the myths along the way of what it's like to be in the energy sector. On the diversity side, it's a very important topic uh, across every company it is at ours as well is it's increasingly now looking to say, how do I ensure that my workforce is as diverse as what the population is? And that's important from two standpoints. First is right socially, you know, that, that's what any workforce should look like and we need to get there as a company. Uh, and so, but secondly, and you mentioned this earlier was the diversity in thought and diversity in innovation uh, can only be achieved if your workforce is diverse. So both of those go hand in hand. One is very, you both are, I think, are in the control of OPG. Um, uh, but then when we get to other stakeholders, I think there's others that will uh, have a role in this as well. If you had 30 seconds to pitch an individual uh, in a position of power in Canada, anyone you want uh, to strengthen Canada's electricity workforce in the future, who would you pitch and what would you say in less than 30 seconds? It would be every political leader, so uh, PM down to the premiers, and the pitch would be really easy. It is uh, focus on the pandemic, uh, make sure that the health of everybody is good, and then let's refocus on the re-education and the upskilling of our entire population. That is where the money needs to go. Do that, most other problems get solved. Uh, skip that process and our economy, and we'll have a harder time recovering and uh, being as strong as what we want it to be.